In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, we gather together today for this holy sacrifice of the Mass. And as we gather together, we give thanks to God for His great love to us, poured out in our lives always. And as we remember the love that He gives to us, we also remember that sometimes we fail Him in our response. So let us prepare ourselves by calling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. You should be living holy and saintly lives while you wait and long for the day of God to come, when the sky will dissolve in flames and the elements melt in the heat. What we are waiting for is what he has promised, the new heavens and new earth, the place where righteousness will be at home. So then, my friends, while you are waiting, do your best to live lives without spot or stain, so that he will find you at peace. Think of our Lord's patience as your opportunity to be saved. You have been warned about this, my friends. Be careful not to get carried away by the errors of unprincipled people from the firm ground that you are standing on. Instead, Go on growing in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. To him be glory in time and in eternity. Amen. The word of the Lord. Response, O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Before the mountains were born, or the earth or the world brought forth, you are God without beginning and end. O oh Lord, you, you have been, been our refuge, refuge from, from one, one generation, generation to the next. You turn men back into dust and say, Go back, sons of men. To your eyes, a thousand years are like yesterday come and gone, no more than a watch in the night. O oh Lord, Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Our span is 70 years, or 80 for those who are strong, and most of them are emptiness and pain. They pass swiftly, and we are gone. O oh Lord, Lord, you, you have, have been our refuge from one generation, generation to the next. In the morning, fill us with your love. We shall exult and rejoice all our days. Show forth your work to your servants. Let your glory shine on their children. O oh Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Alle, alle, alle.
word of God is something alive and active. It can judge secret emotions and thoughts. Ale, ale, ale. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The chief priests and the scribes and the elders sent to Jesus some Pharisees and some Herodians to catch him out in what he said. These came and said to him, Master, we know you are an honest man, that you're not afraid of anyone, because a man's rank means nothing to you and that you teach the way of God in all honesty. Is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay, yes or no? Seeing through their hypocrisy, he said to them, why do you set this trap for me? Hand me a denarius and let me see it. They handed him one and he said, whose head is this? Whose name? Caesar's, they told him. Jesus said to them, Give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. This reply took them completely by surprise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Lord Jesus Christ. Today we hear in the Gospel one of the occasions, because we hear more than one, where the people try to, to trap Jesus. In fact, the, the chief, they go out of their way, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders, they didn't go themselves, but they sent some Pharisees and some Herodians to catch him out. And Jesus realizes that they're trying to trap him. And what are they trying to trap him? Well, it has to do with paying taxes to Caesar. And I suppose their belief is that if he gives a wholehearted response to pay the taxes to Caesar, then he will fall out of favor with the Jewish people. And uh, Caesar and the Romans being their oppressors, of course. And if he says not to give it, then he will fall out of favor with the Romans. So I guess they, 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 they put to him what they believe will trap him, that he can't go one way or the other. And sometimes in our own life, I think we try to trap Jesus, that we try to put him to the test, that we try to see what we could get away with. They say to him, is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay, yes or no? And I think in the been out of our faith, sometimes we are like that with Jesus, you know? What is permissible? What can we get away with or not? And that's when we compromise our faith, when we hide from the truth, when we, we seek to, to not do all that the Lord is asking of us to do. We don't give of Him fully of ourselves, quite unlike what Jesus Himself would do. And even those who come to trap him, although it is flattery, although it is hypocrisy, hear what they say to him. Master, we know you're an honest man and you're not afraid of anyone because a man's rank means nothing to you. And what does that suggest to us? That, that he is not afraid to speak truth to power and that you teach the way of God in all honesty. And that suggests to me, it implies that he's willing to live in the truth in a way that even if it has personal cost in the end, he will pay the ultimate price. But that is the kind of, even though they are flattering him, but that's who he was. And a disciple of Jesus, that's how we have to be as well. That, that we have to be prepared to speak truth to power, that a person's rank means nothing when it comes to being honest, when it comes to the truth. And that we speak, we teach the way of God in all honesty. But sometimes we look at the church and we say, you know, does the church really believe that we could live like that? Does Jesus really believe that we could live like that? And that's when we ask in our own way, is it permissible or not? Is it permissible to do this or not? Should we pay, yes or no? Should we do this? Should we not do this? And all those questions compromises to our faith, where we hold back something of ourselves. And yet, what the Lord wants is fullness, fullness from us. And that is what tied up in Jesus' answer. Because he says to them, he gives them an answer that is um, surprising to them. He says, when he asks for the coin, he says, whose head is this? Whose name? Caesar's. So he says to them, give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar 
and to God what belongs to God. What is Jesus saying there? St. Jerome says, when he's talking about this and reflecting on this, that Jesus points out to them that it is Caesar's image on the coin, and therefore it belongs to Caesar, give it back to Caesar. But in whose image are we made? And of course, we know we are made in the image and likeness of God. And so, St. Jerome says that since we are in God's image, then we have to give our full being, our total selves, back to God Amen. fully. And so that is what Jesus is saying to them. And, uh, you know, we say something, you know, we might wonder, well, what is it to be made in the image and likeness of God? Well, I suppose we could say, strictly speaking, you know, that we have an immortal soul, that we are rational beings. We might also say, in a certain sense, that, you know, God, Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, living in His communion of life and love, or we, we can refer to as a communion of life and love, um, that we are called to live in communion as well. And to, to live in communion here in this earth, so prepare ourselves for heaven. The Catechism talks about heaven as a communion of life and love, where we live with the Trinity, with our Blessed Mother, all the angels and saints. And so we are called to live in a communion of life and love. We are created to live in communion. And so we are made in the image and likeness of God, and therefore it's in His image that we are made, we give ourselves fully to God. So what are we waiting for? Well, St. Peter in the... Um, and, and, and do we see the chances that God is giving us to change from our compromised life, our lukewarm faith, how we live it out, and to live fully for God? St. Peter, in this uh, passage we have here today in the first reading, he says, So then, my friends, while you are waiting, do your best to live lives without spot or stain, so that he will find you at peace. Think of our Lord's patience as your opportunity to be saved. And I wonder if we ever think about that, how, you know, we're taking too much time making the Lord wait to give ourselves fully to Him. And the Lord is patient with us. And maybe sometimes we put that patience, you know, to the test. We, we really stretch that, um, that, that, the patience that He has with us. But St. Peter is saying to us today, the Lord's Word is saying to us today, that to see, to think of the Lord's patience as your opportunity to be saved. He's given us a chance. And I want us to reflect in these times, to think that God has allowed the coronavirus to affect our lives like this today because He's given us an opportunity. And in these times, reflect on that. And what is that opportunity about? That's an opportunity to realize that we have strayed from the path, that we have given ourselves over to Caesar, that in a sense, we have given ourselves over to a worldly kind of life, a worldliness and a sinful kind of life. And we haven't given ourselves fully to God. That in this time of coronavirus, to know that the Lord is allowing this as an opportunity for us to see, to, to see for ourselves, that while we thought before this, we were in control, that we knew everything, that we can do anything, and the Lord is showing us, well, no, it is I who know everything, it is I who am in charge, I am in control, and, and that I can save you. We thought that we could save ourselves, and we realize that we cannot that the only one who can save us is our Lord. And He's given us this time as an opportunity to reflect on that and to see that. And while we're reflecting in this time of coronavirus, I would like everyone to reflect on this, to think about the lengths to which we have gone and continue to go in seeking to heal our physical selves, to protect our physical selves and keep our physical selves safe that the whole world, in essence, is, has been shut down in order to protect our physical well-being. And what about our spiritual well-being? What do we do to protect our spiritual well-being? In fact, what we have done is that we have promoted and encouraged one another to live a life that makes our soul sick and almost sick to die in. Souls of us individuals, the souls of the nation, the soul of the world, is, is dying. And so I think this is a time we have to reflect that we have done so much, we have gone to such great lengths to protect ourselves physically, to ensure that we are physically safe and sound and healthy, that when we come out of this time, the Lord has given us an opportunity so that we will realize that all that effort we put into the physical um, well-being, we have to put that effort, if not more, into our spiritual well-being so that our souls might live 
And I think in this time, we, we are called to, re, to realize that as Jesus says, you know, um, we haven't given ourselves fully to him, he who wants to give us life, but we have given ourselves fully to the world and to a debauched and sinful and corrupted way of life, and we are finding death. And Jesus is there calling us and saying, I want to give you life. And so that's our opportunity today, an opportunity to find life in the midst of the death and the darkness around us. Think of our Lord's patience as your opportunity to be saved. You have been warned about this, my friends. Be careful not to get carried away by the errors of unprincipled people from the firm ground that you are standing on. Instead, go on, go, go on growing in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory in time and in eternity. Amen. Having listened to the word of the Lord and reflected upon it, we are confirmed in our faith and we are confident as we go before the Lord, praying and asking, not only for our needs, but for the needs of others and praying in thanksgiving because we recognize as well all the Lord has done. And so let us pray. And we pray today for the world, for healing in the midst of the coronavirus, for physical healing, but also for spiritual healing, that we may all, man, all men, women, and children in the world turn back from our worldliness and seek to live our lives fully for the Lord because it is in His image and likeness that we are made. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those suffering from the virus, that they may find healing through the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those fighting on the front lines and seeking to help others, that they may be protected themselves from this disease and that they may have the strength and the grace to do all that the Lord is calling them to do. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those seeking a cure, that the Lord's Holy Spirit, in His good time, will help them to find that cure. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our special intentions today, and we pray in, as we pray for healing from the coronavirus, we also pray for healing for all our other afflictions, both physical and spiritual. We pray today for healing for Cornell Chinchong and Margot Walcott. We ask the Lord to touch them and to bring healing, health, and wholeness in their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray in thanksgiving. We pray in thanksgiving with Sister Petronella, who celebrated her feast day a couple days ago, Feast of the Visitation. And we pray that the Lord will continue to bless her and strengthen her and give her the grace, all the graces that she needs to continue the work that he has begun in her for his kingdom and for his people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray in thanksgiving, all those who are celebrating birthdays, we pray today especially for Prince Ayers, who, a parishioner in Maruga, who is celebrating his 100th birthday today. We thank God for the blessing of that long life and for all that the graces he has poured into his son, Prince, all these years. We pray that he will continue to bless him, that he may have good health. And even in these, even at this very advanced stage of, of life, phase of his life, that he may continue to give glory to God in all that he does. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray too for all those celebrating wedding anniversaries and we pray today for Vera and Michael Yanas, who celebrate their 50th, 58th wedding anniversary. We thank God for marriage and for family life. We thank God for the commitment that they have made to each other and kept with each other and kept with God. We pray that God will continue to bless them and their family, that He will give them grace sufficient, that they will keep that commitment for all the years ahead, and that their marriage and their family will, and each one of them individually, will always be blessed. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own special intentions, we just offer that to the Lord now in a moment of silent prayer. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
We pray too for the servant of God, Gordon Anthony Panton. O God, who by the grace of your Holy Spirit tempered the soul of Gordon Anthony Panton with fortitude and humility, and raised him to be priest and Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Port of Spain, so that he may be bearer of your life-giving word to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Grant us grace to be strong in faith, humbly confident in your aid, and tireless in doing good. Bestow upon us, we humbly pray, through the intercession of this beloved servant of yours, Gordon Anthony Pantin, the special grace which we seek from your sovereign goodness, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we make this and all our prayers through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he, as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, 
When suppose ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. And we think of all who have passed away because of this virus. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, oh, Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, power, and the, the glory, glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, let us mingle in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ and eternal life. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
And as we cannot come together physically, we cannot come to receive the Eucharist sacramentally ourselves, we make us an act of spiritual communion wherever we are. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Governed by your Spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Spirit. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We stand for God.